most people went to, were, were conscripted at the age of 18. And what happened is, you, once you'd received the age of 18, you, 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 you get a letter from the, the government, I don't know what part of the government it was, but uh, just to say that um, <laughs> you'd now got to go into one of the armed services. And um, the next thing I knew, I had to papers to say that I'd, I'd got a report to uh, uh, Padgate on a given day, and my day it was the 8th of September, so it was a few months after my 18th birthday, which was in the May. And uh, I, I, you went to, I went, you, went, you, you have a travel pass. I went to the station, went, went to Padgate and reported at Padgate. And then at Padgate, it's where, it's where they issue you with your uniform and tell you about it. You have your inoculations. And it takes about, a, it was about a week. And then after, during that time, they, you, you're notified of where you're going to go for your, um, what they call your square bashing. But square bashing was all right. I mean, you do the usual thing. You, we have to do the assault course, rule on your bellies and nothing there. And you had uh, rifle training. You had to learn how to uh, strip down a Bren gun uh, and fire it. You had, went on the firing range. You had, you had drill. Uh, and, and all, all the other things you've, you've, you've heard about and read about. You had to bull your shoes up and have your, you had kit inspections and if your kit, if your inspections wasn't up to standard, uh, you, you, you lost your privileges and whatever, you know, and you uh, and got to make your bed up. And it was, uh, it was quite an experience. On the very morning that we were about to um, move from Padgate to Innsworth, Gloucester, a parcel came <laughs> and it contained some cakes and uh, so what I did I opened my kit bag and I put the cakes it was a box of cakes on the top of my kit bag and pulled the string together and put it up and put it on when we got onto the um, train that the rack by the way, the, the, the trains then was the old corridor train, if yeah. you, it, where you've got a corridor running down and carriages off it. And there was uh, six of us in this compartment, and I got me a kit bag. We halfway there, and, and one of the chaps said to me, hey, what about them cakes? So I said, all right, so I'm just getting the, the kit bag off the rack as the train went round a corner. Well... The kit bag, and bearing in mind, I put me, uh, you, you have your me, me, me boots and all the heavy stuff at the bottom of my kit bag, shot across the what's name, hit the window of the into the corridor, and cracked the glass. Now bearing in mind, I'm only eighteen. This is my first time away from home, and I felt like crying oh. because of what had happened. Yeah. But I thought I can't cry, I can't cry. I've got to be brave, you know, I can't cry. I didn't know where I was going to be posted, and I mean, people posted abroad because they were, they, they were being, oh, this was 52, they said the Korean War was still uh, going on. Um, but I, I, I found out that I got what was relatively a home posting because I, I was posted to number 30 maintenance unit, Stoke Heath. Our maintenance unit was responsible for all types of motor vehicles, cranes, everything. Nothing to do with the aircraft, it was just the, with like a with motor unit. I went there in like, after the my six weeks, and I, I was at the, that maintenance unit until I got uh, demobbed, which was in um, September, late September in 1954. I, I, I'd been caught in battle. Um, I mean, we were, she was only 16, I was 17 when we first met, and... Uh, as I say, uh, we started courting, and I used to come on weekends, and I, I had a racing bike when I went in, um, because I'd, I'd be, not that I wasn't in the club, but I was keen on racing, and uh, I took it because the maintenance unit that I was, we were at, it was spread over a lot of sites. So I used my own bike. I'd cycle to Wolverhampton, and then back again. But, uh, yeah. So I used to come home and see Bell quite quite regular, but then now uh, we um we, we got we, we in the um October of fifty three we got married. When I was young I I, I was I, I used to be 
very much in the church, and I, I, um, St Barnabas Church, which was in Heath, because I, I was born and raised in Heath Town, the old Heath Town. They, they got a youth club over there, and, and Belle and her friends, and me and my mates used to go to the youth club, and that's how I met Belle. Fortunately, I'd, I'd got a home posting, so I used to come home every weekend, because we used to have every weekend off, and as I say, and some days and nights in the week, I'd get, walk onto the main road with my uniform. And I, I could be over at the for half past six if I got to lift straight away. Leave Bell's house because she lived in Commercial Road. Leave Bell's house around about ten o'clock, and I'd get onto the main road, and I could get I could be back at camp for eleven, half past eleven. For the last six months, I, st I was I started to live out, and um, in, in Commercial Road. But I was fortunate because there was a chap also married, that lived at Bilston, and he'd got a car. Anyway, one day, he's, I'm waiting there for the picked up, and he doesn't arrive, and I wonder, oh, what happened? Anyway, eventually he comes. He, he comes in his dad's car, and he said, I'm awfully sorry. So I get back to the camp. I, I go to the guard room, and I said, you're, you're in trouble. I said, why? Well, I said, well... <laughs> The, the sergeant's been round to fetch the keys because you haven't picked them up. So when I get round to the offices, uh, the office block, that all that all gone in. And, and the sergeant says to me, um, you're, "You're up before the officer." He says, "Because you're on a charge." And I says, "Oh, blimey!" He said, "Yeah." So I got I got charged for failing to carry out my duties as, as key orderly. You lost your privileges for t three days and five days. In other words, you couldn't go off the camp. Yeah. You, 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 you were always confined to camp and you had to report to the guard room every night. Um, you, had to, you had to report, right. And, 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 and that was it, basically. Um, but because of that, I didn't get my... my uh, I, didn't, I wasn't made up to act in court, whereas the other, others had. Okay. But as I, I can always remember, as, as I, I, I stood to attention and flew to the room and walked out, and I just started getting to the door, just come back. So I come, I comes back, and uh, he says, um, "No," he said, "If you, cause he said, if you'd like to sign on for, for, uh, uh, as a regular," he said, "I'll give you a tape." He says, "But I, he said, oh, but he said you won't, there won't be, you won't be an acting corporal. You'll be a substantive corporal with acting. That can take them off you. Substantive corporal." He said, "If you'll sign on." He said, and of course you're married, aren't you? I said, yeah. He said, and of course you'll get married quarters. And he was telling me all the privileges that I should get as, as, a, as a regular. He said, go, go home and have a word with your wife. And uh, I'll come home and, and bell my wife. But, but my, my parents weren't the best of health. And I said, no. So I didn't. A national service at the end of the war was only 18 months. Right. Yes. It was only 18 months. But when... Uh, the Korean War started up in 1950 and they were having to send people and a lot of conscripted, not only RAF, but a lot of army and a lot of them were killed, as you know. Yeah. A lot of um, National Service people were killed in Korea, in the Korean War, uh, because they, had, they thought, well, we've got to increase the manpower, our armed services. So they decided, Parliament decided, to increase National Service from 18 months to two years. But what they also agreed was for the last six months of your service, you would be paid regular pay. 28 shillings a week, that was what the National Service man got as, as, when he went in. And then he went up, if you got like up to a, like you got up to an, a, a lady in aircraft, which I did, and then a cedar aircraft, well, you got just a few shillings, a few more shillings extra. But the basic rate was 28 shillings a week. On the whole, I think it was a good experience. I mean, it taught you, taught you how to stand on your own two feet. Um, you, you had to fend for yourself. I mean, you, when you was, you've got to um, clean your own shoes, you've got to look after your own uniform um, and uh, press your own uniforms and, look, and you've got to make your own bed and you want to make sure everything's nice and clean and tidy because... Yeah, although you were, you were always, you were always what, when you were in a billet, you were responsible for your, what you called your own bed space, yeah. which was not only your bed, your locker, and the floor there, and then the, the billet orderly, because that was another thing, the billet orderly, the billet orderly was responsible for cleaning the centre. 
Bobby and, and the billet orderly, Richard, <coughs> was also responsible for, in the winter, lighting the fires. Because she'd grown up from that, from, from 14, 15, 16, 17, where every, all your older mates were going in and everybody, and they came back and some said they'd had good times and some said that they um, In some ways, <coughs> you may have resented it, but you were looking forward to it. I'd never been away from home, basically, and you felt strange. But within weeks and months, you, you get that camaraderie, you get that comradeship, you get, how shall I put it, you... You're trying out one another, and uh, uh, you, 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 you accept it to a degree, contrary to what some people say. I, I think that, and uh, it was um, natural service, you know, in many ways, was a good thing. Um, it taught you discipline, taught you how to look after yourself, care for yourself. I mean, I look at me now, I mean, I've, I've been a widow now for uh, eight years, but I, I can cope. It's not everybody that can cope, you know. I'm fortunate in a way that I'm still mobile, so I can, but I can cope.